What happens when you put four sailing YouTube channels and a podcaster on one sailboat in the Greek Isles for one week? The boat in Ocean Star 56. The channels, Bums on a Boat, See the Little Things, Josh Post, Ocean Sailors Podcast, and us, Rigging Doctor. Going where the fair winds blow, our home is where the waters flow. We'll show you what we've come to know on board while sailing wisdom. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. 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 You also up? Herbie. The yeah, captain's here. Bye. Here you go. Good morning, everyone. We are here in a harbor on Mykonos Island, and we're headed to Delos Island. It's a short hop, but it's going to be a really great day because the winds are beautiful, the sun is out, and we're going to go see some Greek ruins. Oh my gosh, this island is going to be so cool. I can't wait to share it with you. First thing we're going to do is actually sail off the anchor because there is great wind and why not? In-mass furling is fun. <laughs> Yay, yeah. in-mass furling. Uh, Felling in the uh, main sheet. I recommend you for the windlass. Yeah. Jeez, even though there's like not a lot of pressure on it, this is heavy. We got to tack around. Okay. It's going. Okay, we've got Joel up there ready to pull in the slack on the windlass. The, the chain is piling up, yeah. Oh yeah, usually I'm down there like flaking the chain. <laughs> okay, the next one should be it. redeem ourselves because yesterday we were just diesel happy <laughs> so back to our old ways but sadly we did have to use the diesel just to power the electric windless thing which that was interesting it's got a manual doohickey thing but it doesn't work so when you buy it they're like oh yeah yeah it has manual backup but we tried actually cranking it with the manual and it is not possible <laughs> so one thing that you can do which we've done for chains that don't fit through a windless is it's called nipping where you tie a rope to the chain and then you actually use a cockpit winch and crank it the length of the deck but then you end up with all your filthy chains striped out on your deck and it's it's a mess so Very now gross. we're going we are officially sailing yes. and we're going to get out the jib we are sailing to delos <laughs> <laughs> it's happening That's why we were very handy to have to have <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and we're sailing at six knots right now. Yeah. And it's like, it's completely upright. And I'm just walking around, it feels like we're just chilling. Yeah. Because we are. In our boat, we're doing <laughs> three, four knots, and we're like, let's <laughs> <laughs> <Fresh> go. <laughs> And, and what kind of boat do you have, Joel? It's a Carter 33, 1974. But All the right. key there is 33 feet compared to 56 feet. And like, also like half the tonnage of this. Yeah. Or a third of the tonnage of this boat. So. Yeah, because this boat is what? Like uh, 20 tons? 24. 24. 24, yeah. 24, 24 tons. tons. Yeah. And I think the diesel weighs like 20 tons. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty big. Let's drive. So we'll bring in a midship and then yeah, we'll drive over. Well, you got the electric. Really, oh, thing. and then you can handle the, yeah. the now, jib? He's got it. Oh, you've got it here. The, the stuff that falls, let it fall down at your feet because it's going to go right back out. Okay. Yeah. Thankfully it didn't go past because then that's called a wrap. Yeah, that yeah. is really a pain in the face. Go. 
Uh, so then the trick when that happens is you just go back and it'll fix itself and then you can run. And just appreciate where we are. Okay, we've got 23 knot winds, a heavily reefed sail plan, and we're almost at Delos already. It's been an amazing sail, and we're about to come up on this extremely historic and beautiful island. This is a 100% sailing day, which means no motor whatsoever. We have this big diesel, but we are not using it. We sailed off our anchor and we're gonna sail back onto it. safely and we're just waiting to make sure that the anchor has set before we head over to the island. Meanwhile, we've been boarded by Fair Isle Sailing, so we've got five YouTube channels on the boat right now. We don't wait to be welcomed, we just board you. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we've been here before, so I've, I have read the brochure. This was the cultural and trading center of the world two and a half thousand years ago. It's only really for about 700 years though that uh, it really you know, got going. And then so it's been left. So that's, it's, it's unique for that really in that there's not massive amounts left here of whole temples or things like that, but the scale of it, um, you know, the amount of houses, the, you know, what's left of the sort of bottom floors of those. And some of these would have been, you know, three stories high. So you can imagine coming onto this island and looking up here two and a half thousand years ago where basically most people have come here on wooden ships from places where they're, they're living in not much more than mud huts to have this city of marble and granite and right at the top of the hill there 
was that there's uh, Apollo's temple, so you would have seen it far out to sea. There's a few people that are allowed to live here now, there's little houses for the guardians of this site. Um, but that's it. Right. It's like you're on sacred ground maybe, or it's like, yeah, it feels you're like... through history, right? I feel something, yeah, it's like humbling, or I don't know what this feeling is, I'll come up with the word for it. So I'm kind of feeling the whole human perseverance, like this place was built thousands of years ago, and while there's no humans on here right now, other than us, like it's not a thriving city anymore, it's proof that like humans endure time. Like they lived on a island which is like pretty arid. And they lived here for thousands of years and we're still humans around and we're just walking through here. So the island of Delos is most famously known as the birthplace of the two Greek twin gods, Artemis and Apollo. In addition to these two gods, it was a cult center for Dionysus and the goddess Leto, mother of the twins. This made Delos a huge religious center during the first millennium BC, but there's evidence that it has been inhabited since the third millennium BC. Beginning in the 6th century BC, Athens took measures to purify the island so that these gods could properly be worshipped. As such, all graves were dug up and bodies were moved to a nearby island. From then on, no one was allowed to die or be born on Delos. In 166 BC, Delos became a free port and the center of the slave trade, but the number of inhabitants dwindled, and by the 8th century AD, the island was abandoned. So it's just absolutely crazy to be here right now among such ancient ruins and think about the people who walked around here thousands and thousands of years ago and the, we're standing right now in old dwellings in old houses and some of the floors the mosaic floors are still intact which is absolutely amazing to see but the interesting thing about this specific one is that it has an anchor and it's a fisherman anchor and it just it serves as a reminder that like as a society we you know we look back at these um, ancient people and we feel so removed from them but we haven't we're not actually that removed we haven't come that far you can walk down the street and see somebody with a tattoo of that exact anchor right now and there it is on the floor thousands and thousands of years ago I mean we're talking like 2000 BC and it's an it's a it's still a recognizable image for us and it's one thing seeing these statues in museums and stuff. It's a whole other thing seeing them in context. I mean, this is incredible. We're standing here at an old well, and I'm assuming it's a well for a couple of reasons. The first is when you look down, you can see your reflection way down there in the water. The second is because of these chafes here that are probably from hundreds and hundreds of years of pulling a rope and lifting water out from the well. Which, I mean, it creates such a cool effect.
know, unfortunately you can't anchor at Dallas overnight. Where are we heading? We don't know the name of that island we're headed to. Yeah, me either. I was hoping someone did. It, it, yeah, it's around the corner. It, all I know is, so there you go. Ferrell's no there. So we're going to go, uh, we like we'll just motor along. We see Ferrell, we'll just pull in, drop a hook, yeah. and get some dinner. <laughs> yeah. out of uh, provisions <laughs> for food so for dinner we're gonna make a giant communal pasta yep you know you'd think being a bunch of cruises we know how to provision yeah you think we would have brought more water yeah. not a charter come on yeah, yeah. like two bottles of water for the whole boat and so it's good contact when it's on salads oh yeah actually i don't know if they add to the tea, but oh i could definitely yeah i could yeah. Yeah, I can make you come. Like you put money down and then. You could. Do, do people gamble on chess. Oh, people. Tell me about your fancy meal. Well, Hiba and Mandy worked together uh, to make this amazing pasta. Um, pasta sauce, and I just stuck a big piece of cheese on it, and now it's extra classy. Extra I'm, cheese. I'm very excited. This looks awesome. And today we are sailing from Delos to Knox. So you can see the, the luff of the sail is just like all bagged out. Yeah, and that's right. the issue with uh, roller furling. It reacts really quickly, like I go up course so quickly. The gates or doorway of the Temple of Apollo. Thanks for watching this episode of Sailing Wisdom. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next Rigging Doctor episode. And if you're interested in even more Ringing Doctor awesomeness, consider becoming a patron to see all of our extras. I can't wait to see you next time as you join us out here on the high seas.